Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Before we start the meeting, as always, Madam City Clerk, please read the quote for the week. Thank you. When you are faced with choices, you can achieve your dreams without sacrificing your integrity. Thank you very much. Call the meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Excused. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunis? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Zurich? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Excused. And Wangeman? Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. At this time, uh, Omen Wagaman, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Alderman Longman. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> make the motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First on our list is Tina Thurs. Tina, could you come up to the mic, please? And I need your home address. 2020 South 13th Street. 2020 South 13th? Yes. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. Hi, my name is Tina Thurs, and I'm here to talk with you about agenda item 17-31, which is the creation of the position of lead secretary court services within the Sheboygan Police Department. My intent is to ensure that when you are making your decision, you're making an informed decision regarding the new position. Briefly about me, I have been with the police department for 18 years. The last nine years, I've been the court services secretary. During this tenure, I've come to know the workings of the court system in Sheboygan rather well. I think that when you're looking at likely candidates to take over the administration of the office, you need to look less at formal education and more at the employee as a whole. What skills and experience are they bringing to the table? The court service office consists of two people. Since January of this year, it's been the Lieutenant of Administrative Services and myself. Prior to that, the office was run by the Sergeant of Court Services, which was um, eliminated upon his retirement in December of 2007. The Administrative Lieutenant is retiring at the end of this month. And as a cost-saving measure, the department is now looking to have two civilian employees operate the office, eliminating any sworn officers within the division. The work performed in the office is very paperwork intense. The function of it is to act as a liaison between the police department and the court systems, as well as the attorney's offices, which would be both prosecuting and defense attorneys. The level of knowledge required is not book learned. It can only be learned on the job. Anyone who has assisted in our office will tell you that this is not a job learned in a day. It's not a job learned in a week. So one that takes day in, day out working in the office, it takes frequent and persistent submersion into our little world. My understanding, and I don't have a copy of what may or may not have been given to you as to the specs for the job, but my understanding is that the specs for this position as submitted to you by salaries and grievances doesn't match what was submitted to them by the police department. The position was brought to the committee as a job within the AFSCME 1564 bargaining unit. It was proposed to be a class grade 10, a step above the current secretarial position in court services. I am told that it has been presented to you as a non-rep position, but there's nothing within the job description that would qualify creating it as such. The position was created with the intent of providing someone within the office to ensure that operations will continue to serve the department at the level that they have become accustomed to. Clearly, the city would benefit from hiring from within to achieve this. It is meant to be a lead position, not a supervisory one. Both employees would be answering to an as of yet undetermined supervisor. Indisputably, this fits within the guidelines for making this a union position. The Salary and Grievance Committee also chose to add the requirement that a qualified candidate must have a bachelor's degree. There is no specification as to what that degree must be, and the only reasons that could be provided were that due to the level of the salary that was being offered, they would need someone with a degree, and also to ensure the level of professionalism that the position would require, 
a degree would be a prerequisite. I don't know if I should be offended or amused by this statement. Without a doubt, a person's ability to portray themselves as a professional does not rely on how much time they've logged in a classroom. I'm not trying to minimize the importance of this position or the responsibility that it entails. There are dozens of judgment calls that are made on a daily basis, but certainly a degree is not required to successfully perform this job. To be honest, the person who has been performing this job since January holds no degree. And Lieutenant Reinfeldt would be the first to admit that she's the one signing the letters, but the operation of the office would never have been successfully performed this year without me there to do it. There's nothing within the job description to qualify the education requirements suggested by the salary and grievances. And furthermore, it bears mention that the position that this is replacing, which was a sergeant or a lieutenant's position, did not require as much education as they are now asking for. Let me also inform you that there's no reference manual in court services. It's located inside my head. It's kind of scary for people who know me. If you choose to insist on the educational requirement, not only will you be eliminating from eligibility the most qualified candidate, but you will be requiring me to again train someone to be my boss. In conclusion, I would like to point out that in checking some of the local college catalogs, I was unable to find a degree in discipline, integrity, maturity, or responsibility. These are all qualities that are required to be a successful candidate. Wouldn't it serve the city better, particularly during this time of change and uncertainty, to go with candidates who are tried and true? Someone who can ensure the transition period will go smoothly? Someone who has already been performing the job for a year? Someone who has a well-established rapport with the local judiciary community? I would also like to invite you, if the vote is not taken tonight... Excuse me, Tina, would you like your extra minute? I have just a few more seconds. Go ahead. If, if you do not take the vote tonight, I would invite you to ask myself or Lieutenant Reinfeldt any pertinent questions regarding the day-to-day -day operations of the office. You are more than welcome to come in and observe what happens there and assess for yourself whether or not you feel that a college degree is required to run this office. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And last on the list would be Mike Williams. And Mike, can you pull the mic up close to you, please? How's and this? That's great. And I need your home address, please. It's uh, 1815 Maple Tree Road, Howard's Grove. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. I wish to speak about the Wellness Committee. The mission of your Wellness Committee is to promote an effective and proactive wellness program that fosters the long-term health and promotes a healthy lifestyle for our family of city workers, retirees, and dependents. In return for a healthier lifestyle and better choices, the City of Sheboygan will see savings in their health insurance costs, smaller medical claims, and less people missing work due to health-related issues. As you are aware, on November 15th, the City of Sheboygan partnered with Sheboygan County and the Sheboygan Area School District and held its first annual health fair at Blue Harbor Resort. Over 400 employees and family members attended this event. 47 vendors participated in the health fair and provided many door prizes. In addition, <coughs> local organizations provided wellness activity and tips in the wellness arena. Thank you to all the sponsors and vendors who helped make our health fair a success. And thank you to all the people that came to our health fair. I would also like to thank Mayor Perez, Alderpersons Meyer, Montemeyer, and Zurich for their attendance. This shows your commitment to the well-being of the city employees and support for the efforts of your wellness committee. In a relatively short period of time, your wellness committee has found and implemented a number of programs designed to get people more active and to look at their lifestyles with the hope of change for the better. We have started a Virgin Health Miles program, Bike and Walk to Work Week, Let's Get Physical Sheboygan, and the first annual health fair. Through Virgin Health Miles, we have had a fun challenge that involved over 70 of our employees and family members. In January, we are now looking at a new program with Lighten Up Wisconsin. This is a 100-day program. It's a statewide challenge with the goal of losing weight and getting more active. Virgin Health Miles has agreed to coordinate a challenge with their Health Miles program during this time. I would like to challenge each and every council member to participate with city employees, family, and retirees during this period. We will set up a challenge between the mayor and older persons and city employees. 
This will be on a prorated basis. Show your commitment to the employees and their families and participate in the upcoming challenge. More information about this will be forthcoming in the near future. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize Alderperson Jean Kittleson. The main reason your wellness committee has been able to provide these different programs is because of her dedication to a healthier Sheboygan. Without her endless energy and efforts, we would not have been able to provide and begin so many programs in this short period of time. It has been a pleasure working with you, and I thank you for your passion for wellness and for all you are doing to make our family healthy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. That's it. Next item on the agenda is consent agenda. President Hanna. Excuse me. Just bear, bear with me. Here's out. I, I believe the the uh, the meeting is being televised, but not aired live. So I'll say that we did get we did have notice that it's not being viewed right now live. Uh, we're hoping that it is being televised so we can televise at a later time. Uh, the reason being that we're experiencing some difficulties with charter cable. And it's, 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 it has nothing to do with our equipment. They've come in and checked it. We've checked it. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, so at the moment, uh, I would hope that Carrie, who's behind, will let us know if we do come live. And uh, so it, all of us are aware of that. But in the meantime, it's not being televised. Uh, consent agenda. Alderman Montemayor, did you wish to say something? Yes. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. On agenda item number 1710 in the consent agenda part, can we simply hold that one until the group health insurance committee meets? I'm sorry, you hold it till when? Hold group? it until the insurance committee meets, whenever that may be. You need to refer it back to the Health Insurance Committee. You don't want to. You want to refer it back. Whichever way works, so that we don't file it tonight. It'll be 1710. Please make a notation. We'll be referred back to the Health Insurance Committee. Thank you. Okay, President, Mayor, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> make a motion that all ROs, with the exception. I'm sorry. All ROs be placed on, accepted and placed on file, and all RCs, with the exception of 1710, be accepted and adopted. Second. Uh, can I just make a comment before I second it? It was regarding what Alderman Montemayor said. Oh, we need a second. Somebody I'll needs to second. Okay, second. Now, okay, Vice President Boyd. Uh, the, uh, the communication from Mr. Behrens was referred to the Finance Committee, and Finance Committee did refer it to the uh, group health insurance, so it's appropriate. That it that this also that uh, all of all our persons Montemayor's referral is appropriate because if we filed it it would kill the document so it's good that it's going that she's referring it to uh, group health insurance the same as finance did. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman under discussion on the consent agenda. Alderman Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you. Um, just a point of order. I ask that the motion to also include the resolutions we put upon the passage. You know, so we skip that. We have the ROs and the RCs. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say on my uh, communication, too, I wanted to thank Alderman Vanderweel for being at the health fair as well. So thank okay. you. On the consent agenda, item 17.1 through 17.13, except in 17.10, under discuss further discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clyunis. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Surik, Vanderweel, and Wangaman. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1714, to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1715 through 1723, to be referred. Resolutions introduced, 3, 1724, 
through 1728 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 1729 by Public Works recommending entering into agreement with the Town of Wilson for the purpose of a dog park and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alden Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Can we also take um, 1730 with this? Well, you need to separate, you separate motions. Yes. Okay, I have a motion to accept and adopt the RC and put the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, um, I would like to also add 1730 to this to accept and adopt the result. The That's fine, we can do that. You know what second I'm saying. To that? Second. We can do that. Under further discussion, uh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Uh, I just wondering if, if there was a, uh, on the items, the bullet points of this document that the city will provide the following. There's quite a list of them there. Uh, was there any uh, price tag attached to any of these items so that we know what our participation is going to cost? Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, right now we are just going to do some road work, um, do some curbing, and um, I'm not exactly sure the amount it was going to be minimal. It's uh, paving. Paving. There's a, if I may, there's a, a, a sliver of land that abuts the, the old landfill site, and that land, that piece of land belongs to the city of Sheboygan. What Public Works has agreed to do and spend a minimal amount of money is to pave it so that people have an opportunity to have some parking next to it. And that was the extent of the agreement other than sharing the land and so forth. They had asked for, initially, they had asked for other uh, commitments and the uh, Public Works did, did not uh, approve of those commitments. Anything else? Alderman Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Having been around for the dog park issue for a while, sure. I say thank you, Town of Wilson, for providing a place for dogs to run and then asking us if we will join them. They're doing, it is their land, they're doing the fencing, and they will let our dogs run in there. Thank you, Town of Wilson. And this is, uh, again, heads off to Roger Miller and his uh, board of the town of Wilson. It's another good example of uh, two different jurisdictions uh, sharing services for the benefit of and well-being of the public. Anything else? There is none. Please call roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman aye. and Boren. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1731 by Alderman Montemayor and Meyer amending the municipal code so as to create the job description and job code of the lead secretary court services and delete the job description and job code of lieutenant administrative services. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension. Is, is there any objection to suspension? And the reason for the suspension is so that um, the municipal court and Judge Delahunt has somebody there as soon as possible. We simply need to change the job description and then it can be posted. Okay, then I need a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage. I so move, I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Second, under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with suspending this, um, you know, we just just uh, had this. Um, Ms. Thurs come up this evening speaking on this, and it was the first time I'd heard about it with the with the four-year bachelor degree. I, I'm I'm wondering why now we're suspending the rules to push it through um, at this meeting. Um, I don't, I don't agree with the suspension. I believe that possibly there should be some discussion between now and the next meeting. Um, obviously, if um, Ms. Thurs has her way, uh, we will not have to go out and hire from the outside for this position. So I'm not going to agree with the suspension. I would like to see some discussion take place on this before the next meeting. Alderman Ryan, I did ask you for an opportunity to object to a, a suspension. You did not. The motion has been made in second to put the resolution upon its passage. You're doing it after. Okay. Well, in that case, then I will not agree to put it on its passage. Thank you. Very good. 
Alderman Van Fleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I'd like to hear from the, the, uh, the committee. Uh, uh, now that we've heard some of the concerns uh, from Mrs. Thurs, if, if, if uh, someone from the committee could uh, express perhaps a different view of that or uh, their take on that specifically to the four-year bachelor's degree requirement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Clayoon is your next. Would you like to have Alderman Sark? I would like to wait until they give some Okay, Alderman Sark, did you wish to speak as a committee member? Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I voted no, uh, salary agreements for a number of reasons. One is that I'm familiar with the job, I'm, you know, being worked for the city a number of years, I'm familiar with, with Tina. Uh, I think that she's a natural for the position, and to require a degree for this position just doesn't, as I'm concerned, doesn't quite fit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Clayness. Could I hear some, from someone else in the committee who was uh, sure, for we can this have, resolution? We can have Alderman Montemayor then. Sure. She chairs the committee. Thank you, Your Honor. We discussed this for um, at our last at our last salary and grievance meeting, and it is a well-paid position, and it will be supervisory. That was one of the reasons we felt it should be non-rep instead of union, because it will be supervising other people. And that is also one of the reasons we wanted a person applying for this well-paid supervisory position to have a bachelor's degree. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I, I know that the committee has been working on this quite a bit. And, uh, and I know from individuals coming up to me and actually made an appointment with me to sing Tina's praises. I understand she's a wonderful employee and does uh, terrific work. Uh, this position pays, I believe, between sixty-eight and seventy thousand dollars a year, and with benefits and everything. And I think I understand, if I understand the committee correctly, that's a degreed position for that amount of money. And if it's going to be supervisory and it's going to get seventy grand a year out of the city coffers, I think it's more than more than justified to ask for a degree if the Apparently, the committee made a decision for it to be supervisory. <coughs> if it was going to be a lower level position uh, with less money, then I could see the opposite. But I, I think I understand the, what the committee's doing here, and I, and I certainly support it. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I agree in terms of the, the income level. Uh, as someone who is going back to school to, to continue education, I understand the importance of education in terms of moving forward. However, we are looking at someone who has one individual person who has a lot of experience. And I think the way we have it listed right now as a minimum qualification for your bachelor's degree uh, is eliminating one possible person that civil service can't even look at because it's a minimum, uh, minimum qualification. Um, uh, not to say that she would even get the position if there's other qualified candidates who do apply for the position uh, as well, but I think that's something that we, we have a process in place where civil service should, should at least look at the best candidate for the position. Um, now, we can disagree to see if, if the bachelor's is, makes the best candidate or doesn't make the best candidate, but I'd like to see at least that for this, this round of, of hire to become a minimum recommended qualification versus a minimum qualification. That at least allows the gray area that if she chooses to apply for the position, civil service could look at her as a candidate instead of immediately tossing her out. So I will make that motion to change number six, uh, bullet point four, your bachelor's degree to recommended versus required. <clears throat> it is not a civil service position, just so you're aware. It's, it's just not a civil service position. This is an internal so, position that doesn't go through civil service commission. So it would just be hired through salary agreements then? Yes. Or through yes. supervisor who yes. would actually do the hiring? And that's why the, uh, the requirement. We've gone through these issues before mm -hmm. about uh, college degrees uh, right. uh, uh, mm -hmm. being the minimal qualification. This is really nothing different than we've discussed before, and, and support has been expressed in other instances where a college degree should be a minimal. Yeah. And, well, the clarification for me would, wouldn't be, you know, I'm not, I'm in support of having those requirements. What it would be, though, it would be, would she be able to apply for the position and would uh, salary agreements even look at her application if we don't change that into a required or a recommended qualification versus a required qualification? And if, as is, she would not be able to apply for a position. I, I think that, that kind of goes against the grain of what it is to be an American is perhaps she didn't get the education, but she has the experience. You work your way from the bottom, work your way up. We're telling her basically, you can't do that, uh, and I think that's highly inappropriate. So I would still like to look at, even though it's not a salary agreement, it's uh, ability, at least allow her to apply for the position uh, by eliminating the four-year bachelor's degree as a minimum qualification and adding a, a recommended qualification for your bachelor's degree. Thank you. That's still my motion. 
Is there a second to that motion? Second. Under discussion on the amendment only to change. Please read the change. Um, the change would be on page <clears throat> two of the uh, qual minimal qualifications. It would be a rec uh, four year bachelor's degree recommended instead of being required. Any more discussion on the? Please call roll. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heideman? No. Kittleson? Hi. Clayunas? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? No. Decker? Aye. Can't have a tie. There's only 13 here. <laughs> oh, you got 14 here. You, you have 14. Are we 14? Yes, we have 14. We do have 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a tie. It's a tie. I vote no. Okay, we'll move on with the um, the ordinance being put upon its passage. Please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry, Elman Barn, President, Vice <clears throat> President Barn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I support what was uh, what was done in salary and grievance as far as requiring a four-year bachelor's degree. It's not unusual at all in the private sector in this area that, and, and I appreciate experience and I, and I have personal experience with this with my wife when she used to work at a Kohler company, she was passed over twice for a promotion in her department because she did not have a bachelor's, a bachelor's degree. However, she went back and got a bachelor's degree and then got their promotion. Uh, Kohler company, for example, in certain positions, it doesn't make any difference how much experience you have. In order to be qualified for a promotion, a degree is required. And there are other companies in, in, in the city that, that do the same thing. So uh, I appreciate uh, the Salary and Grievance Committee wanting to update this position to requiring a bachelor's degree, particularly because it's going to be a supervisory position. Thank you. And Paul Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a supervisory position, it's my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there are two people in this department, the person in charge and one other person, um, if, if, if that's what we're referring to as a supervisory position. With, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering here if we're missing the opportunity to save the city some money um, by making this position such an elevated position requiring a bachelor's degree and paying more money. Could we, could we make it a lesser grade position and not require the bachelor's degree and we already have a person trained and ready to go for it? Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to vote no on this and uh, possibly look at it in a different light. Thank you. Okay, uh, Alderman Gish. Sorry, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just so I agree with Alderman Ryan regarding saving money and actually that's what this does, the current person in that position with various sundry overtime uh, is well in excess, I believe at the end of 09, of $100,000. I think it's closer to 115. So this is a substantial savings for the taxpayer. Okay, okay. on uh, 1731, please call roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? No. Surik? No. Vanderweel? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? Aye. Seven to seven. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. 1732 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1642, resolution 1540809, which is not on your agenda, so please write that down. Resolution 1540809, Borough Manhattan, establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates for the medical benefit plan effective January 1st, 2009 coverage. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Please continue. Thank you. Um, I've probably received more phone calls on this topic uh, starting last night at about 6.30. Um, given the number of phone calls that I've received, uh, I would 
<clears throat> like to propose a motion to refer this to the insurance committee for them to meet on Wednesday and then next Monday have a special council meeting to vote on this. Uh, lots of feedback on it and I just want to give people a chance to meet with the insurance committee to talk about it. We, I can refer to the Health Insurance Committee. We don't need a motion in a second. Okay. So is that your Thank request? You. Yes. Refer that to the uh, Health Insurance Committee. Um, I'll have to give thought to calling a special meeting though. Thank you. I, I have another. <laughs> May I continue? <laughs> yes, by okay. all means. Thank you. Um, when they meet, in their infinite wisdom, if they would consider uh, waiving the 30-day notice for our retirees, uh, our retirees received the letters on Friday night, and many of them that are judging whether they want to go with the city plan or not don't really have time. And if they could give consideration to waiving that 30-day mm -hmm. requirement, that would be appreciated. Very good. I think that the uh, committee will take that, certainly take that Thank into you. consideration. It's a reasonable request. Anything else? Okay, we'll move on to other matters authorized by law. 1733, an RC by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 3322 based on the applicant's felony conviction, manufacturer with intent to deliver marijuana and the nature of the violations and the number related to the license activity making the applicant not qualified for the license. Vice President Barr. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Your Honor, is uh, Sean uh, Meyer here tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Meyer appeared before our committee on November 25th, uh, and as you stated earlier, the felony con conviction for uh, the, the marijuana incident actually makes him ineligible for the license unless he could get a pardon from the governor. Plus, he has a numerous other act, uh, or violations that are re uh, related to the license activity. So it was a unanimous decision by the committee uh, to deny the license. Thank you. Vice President Board. Anything else? There is none. Please call roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? 14 eyes. Motion carries. 1734, an RC by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8089 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee and the nature of the violations and the number related to the license activity, which means the applicant is not qualified for the license. Vice President Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion is Jennifer Weber here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Weber was given two opportunities to appear before our committee, the second one by certified mail. She did not appear, so therefore did not cooperate with the committee. And then for the other reasons with her violations, uh, we voted unanimously not to grant the license. Thank you. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1735 in RC by law and licensing recommending granting various licenses. Vice President Boren. One more time. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Surik, Aye. Vanderweel, Wangaman, Boren, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clayunas. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, before we go into closed session, uh, Attorney McLean, other matters? Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> 1736 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Judith Marquardt Slawney. Chairperson of People to People Exchange Committee requesting a contribution of $500 for the student exchange trip to St. Petersburg, Florida for three students from Esslingen, Germany. That will be referred to Finance Committee. 
1734 is a communication from Louise Hansen stating her concerns with the lack of removal of diseased trees in her neighborhood and the lack of trimming the branches on trees. That will go to Public Works. 1738 is a communication from Frank Regudis stating his upset with the increase in the health insurance premium for retirees. That will be referred to finance. 17. Excuse me. Oh, McLean is. Thank you, Your Honor. Could it be referred to the Health Insurance Committee as yes. well? Yes. And Health uh, Insurance Committee. Thank you, Alderman McLean. 1739 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. That will go to law and licensing. 1740 is a resolution authorizing entering into a license agreement for rental of City Tourism Division office space at Memorial Mall. That will go to finance. 1741 is a resolution establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates for the dental insurance plan effective for January 2009 coverage. That goes to risk management. President Hanna, motion. Close session. Ex ex pardon me, Mayor. Could they, the last item, could you refer that to finance and health insurance? It's finance and health insurance, then. Just keep in mind, there's you're going to have multiple referrals, so. Then just do health insurance. Health insurance. Then. Not risk. No, risk and health. Risk, risk and health. Please make that notation. Thank you. <clears throat> motion. Great. Um, Mr. Mayor, Council, a uh, motion to convene and close session under exemption provided in section 19.851G of the Wisconsin statute for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral or written advice concerning the strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to Ms. Margie Verhult's EEOC age discrimination complaint. Second. 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 Any discussion? Please call roll. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wangaman? 14 ayes. Motion carries. At this time, we'll go into closed session. I'd ask everyone to leave except HR and the attorneys.